So the next uh, mold maker I'd like to bring to the stage is Lester Jones with Custom Mold in Minnesota. Uh, Custom Mold has a laser powder bed metal 3D printer with milling capability built in. Um, lets you 3D print mold tooling directly. Um, Lester, how you doing? Uh, we have, as of last fall, we purchased a Matsura. Excuse me as I mess around here. Yeah. While he's working on that, so we've got a Matsura Lumex. Avance 25, which is a, a powdered metal a laser centering machine. It's uh, considered a hybrid machine because it's also got a machining center built on the same platform, so it lays down uh, layers of powder, lases those, and then every 10 layers it will machine the part. So we are able to get a complete uh, machined part out of the machine each cycle. An advantage you get out of that is conformal cooling. Can That's correct. That, cooling a little bit? That's the greatest uh, utilization of the product. So. Uh, we're in the business of building tools for our customers, trying to produce the best quality parts that we can, and also try to be as efficient we can so that we can make their part uh, costs lower. So conformal cooling helps us in both those areas. Uh, we've got, at the end of this, if you'd like, there's some copies of a white paper at the back of the room. Um, you can take a look. We ran a part that is sitting down here on the floor, a rather large core for battery housing. Uh, built it in an existing mold base, so we are somewhat limited with the ins and outs of the water, but we put uh, some helical spirals of cooling in that. We're able to take eight seconds out of an 18 second cool time, uh, reduce the warp in the part, uh, overall improve the cycles. Uh, so it's a good thing for our customers. Our, our job is to build the most sophisticated molds we can uh, to help them in their production needs, and that's an example where we're able to help them in a couple ways. So with these elaborate channels in here, you've improved cooling time on this tool. Um, but I, I'm aware it wasn't as simple as this. You've had a learning curve with That's metal correct. 3D printing. Maybe talk about what you've learned. Yep. That's correct. There's several things involved in it. I think those of us that are mold makers in the audience, um, I think we are generally a pretty creative group of people that will figure out how to make things work and get things done. Um, if we're working in uh, three-axis CNC machining and then we decide that we're going to invest in five-axis machines, that's something with, that we're somewhat familiar with. We're expanding that, taking it in a different direction, making it a little bit more difficult, but it's sort of just going to the next step. Uh, we learned with the additive manufacturing piece it was substantially different than that. It's an, a, an area that we've not been involved in. So the first thing we do is you end up taking probably one of your best people in the existing operation and having to pull them off of what they're doing very, very well and put that on something that they know nothing about. And it takes some patience. Um, it's a great opportunity for those people to advance their careers and it's the right thing to do as an employer and it kills you on some days when you really need that guy on the five axis machining center and he's messing around with something that he doesn't really know much about. But uh, in a matter of a few months we've learned a tremendous amount and we've really progressed. At, the, the people that have been involved in it are extremely proud of what they've learned. Uh, they're really excelling. So it's been a very good thing overall, but it's a little bit painful in the short term. Um, we also learn new things. Uh, it's a, a new endeavor for our partner, Matsura, and we're learning together. Um, I think the, the key thing I would say is that you want to make sure that you hook up with somebody that's going to work with you closely so that as you run into issues, you've got a true partnership and you're willing to exchange information back and forth, work side by side with each other. It may involve things even improving the equipment, improving the process, and if you work together on those things, uh, you're just going to be a lot more successful. And We've been fortunate enough to have that kind of a relationship with Matsura to this point in time. So I, I guess just to emphasize something you said, one of the prices you discovered you had to pay was using some of your best people seemingly inefficiently while you're letting them figure out how to use this capability. Yep. Um, is, is there more you want to say about that? It's, it's like I say, it's if you really care about your people and you think about what, who you want to be as a manager or as a leader, it's the right thing to do and you really provide some opportunities for those people to move forward in their career. Um, but at the same time, we're all business people. Uh, we've got businesses run, we've got customers that have high expectations, need to meet deliveries, all those types of things. I think we've all been in that spot where you're tempted, you've got a really star performer and you really need them doing what they're doing and you know that the right thing to do is kind of turn them free and let them fly, but you kind of love them for what they know and what they can do and you've built the business maybe uh, counting on them to be there. So it's, it's a challenge, but I think we probably all know in our best moments 
you sit back, we know the right thing to do is to give them those opportunities to uh, move forward and learn and expand their career. I very briefly picked up the parts you brought. Yep. Uh, so 3D printed mold tooling, milled as you go, yep. right? So um, this, in this case, the machine puts down 2,000 thick layers. It will center 10 2,000 thick layers, and then it'll go through a machining operation of that 20,000 thick. And these, these conformal cooling channels are also milled in, yep. in process. Yeah, that's the one advantage is that there's a lot of these, uh, there are other additive processes where you can build a part like this. In this case, we can machine features that end up inside of the part if we choose to. Um, this is a real customer part? Yep. And that, that's the case with this one as well? Yep. Yep, they're real parts. The issue we typically have is most times you don't get the chance to build the mold two different ways. And so in most cases, we've got a tool that's been built with conventional cooling in mind. So our entrances and exits for the water are predetermined. And if we could really go wild and think about have the sky's the limit where we want the water to roll through the tool, uh, we could probably do a little bit more. But in the cases that we've done actual studies on where we want a conventional core and a conformally cooled core, uh, we need to live with that mold base as it exists today. But we're still able to generate things like a 44% reduction in, in cooling time in the larger example. Excellent. Thank, Thank you. you. I'll leave these parts up here.